On example three, we have yet another river-based question. We've got a bug. Remember, a bug is a being of unspecified gender. Launches a boat from point A on a bank of a straight river. All the rivers in calculus are totally straight. Anyway, that's three kilometers wide, as we can see right here in this little diagram, and wants to reach a point that is eight kilometers downstream on the opposite bank right down here. Uh, as quickly as possible. She could row the boat directly across the river to point C right there, and then could run all the rest of the way down the bank to point B, right? That's one option. Another option is our bug could row all the way downstream directly to B and not have to run at all, or a compromise between those two. Uh, let's see rowing from A to some point in between C and B, we'll call it D right there, and then running the rest of the way. Okay, that's what all of those words say. Let's look at the last part here. If she can row six kilometers per hour and run eight kilometers per hour, where should the bug land to reach B as soon as possible? As soon as possible. What does it sound like we are trying to minimize or maximize? What are we optimizing here? We are optimizing time. As soon as possible is time. And as soon means we want the smallest time possible. So we want to minimize time. Okay, so we are basically coming up with an equation then for time. So let's see if we can use some grade school knowledge here about distance, rate, and time. So you might remember that distance is equal to a rate times a time, but we want to solve this, of course, for t here. So our time equation is going to be equal to some distance divided by a, uh, 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 a rate. Yeah, there we go. All right, I did that because we have two different rates and two different distances that we're talking about. Let's go back to our first step, which is drawing a picture, which we have, and uh, you know, labeling all the stuff that we have. So let's say that, let's ignore this AC for right now. Let's just take these two cases, this AD and this A. Well, actually, I'll just take one of these cases, this A to D. It can function as any of these three, depending on where we actually land on the river. And then the distance from this D to this B is going to be the running distance. So I'm going to label these things as like a D1 and a D2 down here. Okay. All right. So those, those are our distances that we're talking about. And then we also have ourselves some rates. So this is a, a rowing rate and a running rate right here. Let's write those things down too. So row, row is equal to six kph and run is equal to eight kph. All right, all right. So we've got the preliminaries down. Talking about preliminaries, let's write ourselves a primary equation. You know what? We kind of almost already did. We almost did, but this is this is taken into account that you only have one particular distance and one particular rate. We're going to have two different ones. One for uh, D1 that we labeled here and the other one for a D2 that's right there. Okay, so here's going to be our primary equation for time. It's going to go like this. Our time is equal to our D1 over rate 1 plus our D2 over rate 2, where we're talking about our rate, rate 1 and our D1 as being the row stuff versus the run stuff, right? Does this make sense? Our time is going to be the distance from A to D divided by 6 kilometers per hour plus our distance from D to uh, B right here, divided by eight kilometers per hour, right? And we want minima, minima, minimize time. <laughs> Try that again. Let's see, minimize time. All right, that's what we wanna do. Now we've got way too many variables. As a matter of fact, these right here aren't variables at all. 
Um, R1, that's going to be our row, that's 6, and then this R2 is 8. I can just take those things out right quick and put those on there. So they're not variables at all. Okay, but the D1 and the D2 are, and we need to decide on a particular variable here. Um, and let's see. At, here, let's go back to the original question. Um, where should the bug land? In other words, it's this point uh, B, B? No, I think that's a D. The D right there. We want to know how far along the riverbank that the bug should land. Let's call that distance right there X. That's not our D1. It's the distance along the river. Oops. It's the distance along the river where our bug is going to land the boat. Okay, and then everything that's left over, that is actually D2. And if the whole thing is 8, everything that's left over must be 8 minus x. That's the segment addition postulate from geometry. Wait, I meant to change the color of this thing. Hey, go away. Oop, oop, oop. So this thing is 8 minus x. Okay, so there's our two variables. And we're going to have to come up with expressions for each one of them. Uh, well, I've got one of them. The, the easy one is D2, right? So these are our secondary equations then. Secondary equation. Our first one is actually our second one because it's the easier of the two. It's just simply 8 minus x, which we'll substitute in there in uh, right here, and then we're just going to have an x. We need a, an expression for d1 also in terms of x. Could you have done this problem differently? You certainly could. You could have done the problem in terms of d1, but it would have been much more complicated to get what d2 is. Uh, whatever. So let's see if we can come up with an expression involving x for d1. Well, notice that you have yourselves a right triangle here. Does it need to be colored in? Let's color it in yellow. Let's see if it even shows up yellow. It sure doesn't. Not really. I was expecting that to kind of be a greenish color because yellow and blue makes the green. I guess it's kind of green. Anyway, so we've got a three up here. It's three kilometers. One side is X, and then we have the hypotenuse as being a D1. So let's just solve that thing for D1. Let's draw ourselves a little extra picture here. Eh. Uh, all right, this is our 3, our x, d1, and we'd have d1, oops, d1 squared is equal to an x squared plus 3 squared. We want d1, so we we'll have to take the square root of that, so d1 is equal to the square root of x squared plus 9. Okay, there we go. We've got our two secondary equations, which we're going to substitute into our primary time equation. Okay. So we've got time is equal to the square root of x squared plus 9. There's our first distance divided by our rowing rate, distance divided by our rate, plus 8 minus x. There's our running distance divided by our running rate of 8. There we go. We have our equation.